The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Revelation 9.20, the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silk, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that cannot see or hear or walk. There is something about God that is awesome. It is His ability to forgive and forget the sins and mistakes of yesterday. It will not take God anything to forgive those that will genuinely repent of their wrongdoing. He says he would have mercy on whom he will have mercy. This statement is not ordinary. It is what God has been doing from the beginning of the world, and he continues to do it. However, there is a punishment for those who have refused to repent and ask for forgiveness of sin. Psalms 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. It is not a bad thing to talk about God's goodness all the time. It is neither bad to talk about God's mercy all the time. We know that God is good, and He can change any unpleasant situation to become a pleasant one. God can bring testimony from a problem or a challenge. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. Goodness is one of the characteristics of God. It is one of the things God enjoys doing for His people. The psalmist was a testifier, a person that has enjoyed the goodness of the Lord. And he is telling us that this God is good, and not to him alone, but to all generations. We serve a good God, a merciful God. It's a privilege to be in the Lord. As a pastor always said, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. We all know this popular saying. Well, it's not just a saying, but a true word, a confession of what God is. In any situation we find ourselves in, we should know that God is good all the time. God is good, and He will always be good to those who fear Him. But that doesn't remove the fact that God can destroy those who are rejecting the call of repentance. In Revelation 9.20, we can see how stubborn people will become. People who worship idols, people who do not believe, were destroyed. What one would think of those who escaped doing at that time is repent, but they still reject the call for repentance. Is God calling today and you are rejecting Him? Have you been hardening your heart towards the call for repentance? Remember what happened to Pharaoh and his people. It led to their destruction. God wants to bless you. He wants to have mercy on you. He wants to show you His goodness. But that will not be possible if you choose to be stubborn and reject repentance. Revelation 9.21 says, nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. They continued with their sins. They felt no remorse. They don't care if others are punished for the same sin they are into. They will always continue to sin. These people are evil. These people cannot dwell in the presence of God. They will be utterly destroyed. That is the truth that we need to tell ourselves. We should not lie to ourselves. God will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. And these people are people who will ask for it. You can't go about sinning without repenting and say God is a merciful God, that he will forgive you. If you do not repent of those sins, you will never see the mercy of God. That's the fact. People believe God to be good only with their mouth but their hearts are far away from Him. The so-called Christians have gone out of the ways of the Lord, the only way that was recognized by our Heavenly Father. It's true, God is always merciful and good to all, but did you know that God Himself will only have mercy and be good to only the selected one? Psalm 73, 1, God is indeed good to Israel. To those who have pure hearts, God will show His goodness only to the people He is willing to show. Exodus 33, 19. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. God will only show mercy on those who seek to repent, those who heed to the call of repentance. This passage of the Bible 
lets us know that God cherishes purity. God is pure. Psalms 24, 3 and 4. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. A pure heart is what God needed for us. Do you want to see God in his royalty? Do you want to enjoy God's kingdom? Then you must be pure. You must be holy. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The only condition that is given to us if we want to see God is that we must have a pure heart. No one will see God without a pure heart because it is necessary. Now, people talk about the goodness of God every time, and you wish to enjoy this too. Examine yourself vividly. Are you qualified? If we are preaching the good news, if we are telling people about the gospel and we are not mentioning repentance, then what are we preaching? If you claim you are serving God, you claim to know God and you have not repented from all known sin, then who are you serving? John the Baptist came before Jesus and spent his life shouting and calling people to repent in the wilderness. He was busy making people see the reasons why they need to repent. John could have stayed at a good place speaking about Jesus that is coming along without mentioning the word repent. It is very possible to just speak of Jesus without telling them to repent or baptize them, but repentance is important. It is a heavenly call. It is not just about John calling them. What do you want to be without repenting and asking for forgiveness of sin? Do you want to keep going about with the guilt of sin? Do you want the burden of sin to weigh you down? Jesus came to the world also, and he continued preaching to the world to repent. Many other people followed and called for repentance. The choice is yours to make now. God has called you through Christ to repent. He has told you that he is ready to have mercy on you and be good to you and your generation. Do you want all of these or do you want your stubbornness to get the best of you and lead you to destruction? God has placed two options before you. It is yours to choose which one you will go with. Deuteronomy 30, 19, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. What will you choose? Stubbornness and rejection of the call for repentance or live by repentance? We need to know what repentance is because we have taken repentance to some kind of prayer we pray daily and just forget about them. Repentance is a call. It is a heavenly message. This is a message from God himself. He sent his people out to mankind telling them to come to him. The devil has his message too. He wants people to get to him too. But then we know what the works of the devil are. He has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. This is why you need to accept the message of God and get into his shield. Let God cocoon you. Heed to the call. Proverbs 4.10. Listen to me, my child. Take seriously what I am telling you, and you will live a long life. The message of God is the message of life and life in abundance. Repentance is the first step to Christianity. You can't jump this step. You can't call yourself a Christian when you have not heeded to the call that brings salvation. When God calls you, he wants you to repent. That is when you now have the right to be called his child. John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.